So everyone and their mothers have given young Arhangar a spine a go this season because of how you can crank up your grenade usage by 11 with the Hunters and Solo 3.0 update. Now, the secret lead the exotic has always been good, especially in PvP, as no one expects them, but it's only become apparent now that they have found some source of success in PvE to a large degree. So to make your lives a lot more easier with understanding how this works, I'm going to show you a really fun build that you and your friends can use for endless grenade fun. It may look bare bones at first, but do remember that you can improve this along the way for more benefits, but trust me this version I have is enough for those that want to get on with it. But you know what else has been secretly underrated over the years? This channel right here. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications for more stuff like this in the future. It goes a long way for me. So starting with the subclass, we'll be using Blade Barrage, as this now has become the highest and strongest DPS super for hunters in game currently, and is pretty flexible for a number of hunter builds. To make this build effective for what it does, you'll need two things. A lot of Scorch, Stacking, and Ignitions, which is pretty easy to achieve. We want to make sure that our grenades are not only impactful, but practically leaves craters everywhere we go, and thanks to Gunpowder Gamble, we can achieve that. So let's go over what we have. For Aspect, we have Gunpowder Gamble, which allows us to build up stacks or charges to create an improvised grenade with a large blast radius and damage. We then have Knock em Down, which allows our Blade Barrage to produce more projectiles. For Fragments, we have Ember of Searing, where defeating Scorch's combatants grant us melee energy. Ember of Ashes, which grants us more Scorch stacks on a target, and Ember Blistering, where defeating targets with Solar Ignition grants grenade energy. For stats, we have 18 Mobility, 17 Discipline, and 15 Strength. All of these will lead back into each other, even though this is a grenade build through and through. Uh, do remember, if you ever create a build with one function in mind, it's always wise to try and link it in with another stat, so nothing feels wasteful. For key mods now, you'll want Elemental Ordnance for creating worlds with grenades, Mili Wellmaker for creating worlds via Mili, Phantom Might for a 25% sword weapon buff, Powerful Friends for a plus 20 mobility and allow others to become charged with light, and Battle for for plus 2 wells created instead of 1. The general gist is that applying a ton of abilities and silly kills will allow us to create an improvised explosion within a few seconds, and from here we can apply a ton of scorch damage via Mili before letting loose and triggering a Holy Mary of Ignitions on whoever we face. If done right with some combatants nearby, we can get a full grenade back and keep throwing 2 to 3 etc grenades until we can't get any more back. Now, rinse and repeat, and basically you want to keep throwing things at a target until it goes away. This may look simple, but the effect your one grenade and Ahamkara combined together will make makes it a very powerful setup if you ever want to nuke zone cleans or just like to see a mini boss suffer. Now, when it comes to weapons, you'll need to be packing the right stuff as well, which will vary from player to player. In my primary, I have Stasis Fusion as I've become one of the best secondary weapons to use for taking out majors to mini boss levels of threats. The Burden of Guilt Fusion has Chilcalip as a perk, which allows us to slow and then freeze combatants after the second shot, and will also cause extra damage on top of that. Now, this is great for the build, as we can pile on the build up damage and nuke whatever combatant unfortunately is on the receiving end of this. Now, don't worry if you don't have the full on weapon, as it's not the only Stasis Fusion in game. The easiest one I would recommend everyone get is the Riptide, as that can drop from PvP and can get the full-on perk as well. The only difference is that it will fire faster and have less impact, which can be handy compared to using an adaptive frame, but this is more down to the user. A Sentry adds a Sunshot, which is perfect for an explosive based build, but it's oddly not as appealing at the same time. Depending on where you use it, it can be pretty useful for clearing rooms out in a single shot, and if you use Elemental Armament or Explosive Wellmaker as well, then you pile on the Elemental Worlds with ease. On the other hand, it feels very weak against Mages and above, and doesn't have that kick to it which makes me fall in love with it. It's good, but it feels weird at times, and it also doesn't come with Scorch effects either, which would have really made the weapon shine in most encounters. Now, the Callus Mini tool with Incandescent is a better weapon to use if you actively want to build Scorch damage up, and this type of weapon with the build will do you a huge favour in actively getting what you want. You can even combine the pearl with some subclass traits for unique effects overall. For Heavy, we have Chain of Command Machine Gun, which I recommend you all at least get since Machine Gun's got a buff and are now pretty effective for higher tier content. Having Osmosis and Demo on a weapon for a build catered toward grenades allows users to truly bring out the match game and offer some strong synchronization in terms of DPS. 
Once you add in our Legion and follow my buff as well for a 56% solar buff, you'll then see the weapon can be even more useful in in-game, but only to a degree, as is on the timer. If this isn't for you, which I know is true, you can always use Galahorn instead, which is a monster in itself. Although, it's always nice to try new things out every now and then. For stats, we have the mix of near everything on the table, since hunters rely on quite a few things to make their builds function more compared to titans and warlocks. Let's start with mobility, as I know a few of you may be asking why this stat is so high. I have this at 80 at best, as I'll be using and abusing the acrobat's dodge to get a radiant buff near 100% of the time. Now, when you combine this with knock them down, you can get your melee back easily as long as you get a kill with them, and thus infinite knives on the hand. When used properly, it makes using melee while make a must as you'll always be guaranteed melee energy back, no matter how you look at it. At the same time, we can also use this to build up stacks of Scorch on a target, as Ember Searing will have a major play at hand when using our Scorch friendly build. It's why melee is left at 50 to 60, as all of this alongside your young Ahankar Spine will easily get your melee and grenades back as long as you hit the right targets. For safety, I have Momentum Transfer where causing damage with grenades grant melee energy back, and Invigoration where collecting the aura power will grant you melee energy back as well. If you follow these steps, then your mini cooldown should feel like it's at 100. Grenades at 70 now is enough for you to spam your grenades multiple times as long as you trigger Young Ahankar's spine ability. For this now, easily using your grenades and getting multi kills will be a big help in this area for you, or simply using knife trick for the mini option will grant you a full stack of grenades back if all your knives connect. Now, this is because each of the blades for knife trick are counted as individual blades, so connecting all three of them will grant you a full grenade back and some stacks towards your stupid grenades. You also have elemental wells helping you out, so to be fully honest with you, you don't even need to get the stat to 100 to see a difference, nor do you need any perks or mods to help you out even more. This is all that you need if you want to use this in casual to even end game content. Leftover wise, we have Harmonic Siphon for creating orbs of power, Ashes to Acid for getting super energy via grenades, Flame Harvesting for creating elemental worlds via exotic weapons, Although this can be swapped out for rays of precision while being radiant and getting solar precision kills ignite targets, and solar formation where your ignitions do increased damage in an increased radius. Now, as we've covered the main topics of the setup we are using, here are the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build. For our head, we have Resilience, Assets to Assets, Homelux Siphon, the Elemental Orders mod. Arm, we have Minor Discipline, Momentum Transfer, Mini Wall Maker mod. Chest, we have Mobility, Cocos of Dampner, Armor of the Dying Star, and Fought the Might mod. Leg we have Resilient, Invigoration Times 2 and Powerful Friends mod. Mark we have Solar Formation, Flame Harvesting and Powerful Well mod. Now pros, cons and what you're in for, as you're going to want to take some notes on this section. The great thing about the build is how often you can use your standard grenades back to back with each other because of the amount of energy you get back from a single explosion or mini kill. This can help a lot if you want to quickly build up improvised grenades to create the areas with no second thoughts, and this is generally how you're going to be able to build up your stats quickly and then go to town. As shown, you'll be able to get 2 to 3 grenades back against a small mixed group of combatants, which is suspected when you have wells also helping you out in the mix. Against a far larger group though, like those seen in Psyops and Gambit, a single well placed grenade can take out a whole room's worth and more if they keep respawning and adding on the improvised explosion as well leaves literally nothing standing. It's also great as a sort of boss DPS as it can inflict some noticeable damage against a few. But do you remember while all of this is happening, you'll also be applying Scorch and Ignition, which all feeds back to you and make your attacks even more harder hitting. So this sounds amazing for all those grenade nuts out there, but there's a catch, and it's a suspected one. Using grenades in general are dangerous, and I don't think I need to show you examples of this. One core issue with the build I've come across multiple times, and you're gonna come across as well, is that if you throw your grenades at a button and they decide to chase slash charge at you while they have the grenades attached, you're gonna be in for a rude awakening, and this happens a lot of the time. Improvised grenades are even worse at this, as if you detonate them too early, you die because of how strong the explosion is. Or if the target jumps to you with a grenade attached, you'll die as well, and there's not really much you can do. It's a very risky build that is fun to use, but will absolutely wipe you out if you mess up even once. Having restoration based mods or perks that help with slowly getting your health back if you mess up, but this can only go so far. In the end, this is expected as you're playing with explosions, and I'm sure your parents told you not to play with explosions while you were young. It has the firepower to clear areas, 
and further allows Arhankar's spine to really shine in PvE or PvP. You just need to be careful of the charging combatants, as they are the real threat to end game and your fun in general. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you like that kind of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next one.